together But still it's farewell Maybe we'll come back To earth who can tell I guess there is no one to blame Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the final countdown by Europe. What a tune this one is. Really good one for New Year's Eve uh, in the, you know, the countdown to the final chimes of the new year kind of thing. I was just thinking about it before and I think I've played this tune on definitely more New Year's Eves than I haven't in my entire life. Like this is pretty sure from the age of like 12 or 13 when the tune came out, I've played it like every New Year's Eve up until maybe 10, 15 years ago when I stopped doing the cover band thing. So, uh, yeah, weird thing. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do like an acoustic version of this tune, so it's the kind of thing that you might want to play with your friends and family. Uh, it's relatively easy chords. There is a B minor chord in it that you can kind of blag your way through. I'll show you a little cheat for that if you're not feeling confident with your B minor. Uh, I'm going to show you a way of incorporating the main melody into the chords as well, because that's kind of a fun thing to do. But remember, if you can't do that, if you find it tricky because it's not super easy, you can always just sing the da -da 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 bit while you play the chords. Uh, so we're going to start off with a, a look at the super simple chords, and then I'll take you through how to fancy it up if you choose to go that way. Let's start off with the chords that go under that main riff melody. So it's E minor, C, A minor, D. E minor to D with an F sharp bass to G and then to C then B7 sus to B7 So E minor for one bar two three four C A minor D that section repeats around as many times as you want. The E minor to C. A minor. Let's do it one more time. I think the intro goes around four times through that sequence. Next section is two beats on E minor, two beats on D, D chord with an F sharp bass, or just D chord if you can't deal with the thumb over the top if you you can just play to D, G, any variation of G that you fancy doing will be fine, to C. Now this next chord is a B7 sus, you can play it that way if you know how, but I think a nicer one is this, it's like an A chord, but you move everything over a string. So. Uh, when muting the thicker string, second fret, second fret, second fret, open, open. Now technically, to make it a regular B7 again, you'd drop first finger back to the first fret, and little finger would go down on that note F sharp, second fret. So from here, little finger off, first finger back, little finger down. There's a regular B7. And then we got four bars of E minor. Okay, but I often like this. So I'm just then not playing the thinner string. I'm not putting little finger down. Just like playing those middle four strings. But it wouldn't even matter if you play that thinner string anyway. It's not, you know. What you're after is that sound. That's the important bit. So one last time through that. Three, four, E minor. Next section, it's E minor to D with F sharp bass and G. I'm going to C, B7 sus to B7. E minor two, three, four. 
So there's four bars of the E minor there in between that intro riff and the start of the verse. Uh, if you're playing it on your own, it doesn't really matter how long you stay on that. You could stay on it a little bit longer uh, while you wait for all your friends to get the lyrics up on their phones if, uh, if that's what's going on. So let's get stuck into the verse now. So we're starting with the E minor. We're leaving to E minor. Third bar of E minor to A minor for one bar. E minor. And then it's another E minor, E minor to D with an F sharp bass to G, 3, 4, C. And then it's a D in this town, G, with a D with an F sharp bass, E minor, with a D bass to C. We're gonna B minor the same again. Okay, let me go through with that a little bit slower now and explain some of these other weird things going on for three bars. Two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Then A minor for one. Back to E minor for two bars. One, two, three, four. Then E minor, D with an F sharp bass to G. Next section, C to D. G with a D with an F sharp bass, walk down to E minor. Now this little move here, What's going on? It's an E minor, then an E minor with a D bass. Often played like that, so E minor. So it's just, it's, it's literally, we just want a D as the lowest note. But a nice trick I like to use, it's not technically correct, I guess, to play it this way, but it gives you that. Now, I know I've, actually I've neglected to mention there's a cap on the second fret. It's literally moving those two fingers for the E minor up three frets but targeting this note as the lowest note. So no longer playing that as the lowest note. And that way you get this step down from the E minor, D bass, to the C. Okay? C. Never gonna be the same again. Now, this is a B minor, and for most beginners, they'll see a B minor or a and be like, ah, oh, I can't do it. Now, in this particular case, the B minor and the D are they're really kind of similar sounding. So if you're really struggling, yeah, you're gonna see the same again. You can just jump to the D early. It doesn't sound exactly right. Uh, but B minor is one of those chords where if you even if you're struggling with bar chords generally, you might find that the B minor is kind of more possible. If you can play F you probably find that B minor is not too bad, actually. It feels, for most people, it feels a little easier than an F chord, although I'm not exactly sure uh, why that is. Play one more time through that verse so you can see all of that in action. I'll do it a little bit slower though, so. Two, three, four, E minor. We're leaving together But still it's farewell And maybe we'll come back I guess there is no one to blame We're leaving ground, leaving ground Will things ever be the same again? It's the final countdown Now you see there, I just strummed one strum per bar most of the way through that, but that little bit on the D at the end, a very specific rhythm pattern of one and two, three and four and two, three, four, one and two, three and four and, one and two, three and four and, one, two, three and four and, it's the final counter. Really, really important to get that little bit. As far as the rhythm of the other parts go, because we're doing like an acoustic version, it doesn't need to be the kind of the rock gallop that you kind of hear on the original recording. Even as simple as like Old Faithful, down, down, up. But still it's farewell You can do almost anything And maybe we'll come back To earth who can tell My memory's got a little bit wonky So doing that down, down, up, up thing You could go um, We're leaving together yeah. Accents on two and four One
that's obviously got a lot more kind of movement. So it depends on whether you're going for like a bit more energetic thing or a bit more of a laid back thing. So, you know, have a bit of an experiment, see what you feel confident with, because uh, that's the most important thing when you're doing this, especially if you're playing it with friends on New Year's Eve. You want it to be confident and feeling nice and kind of easy and not struggling to do some sort of rhythm pattern that you're not that familiar with. So err on the side of easy patterns rather than ones that are a little bit difficult. Okay, so that's the nuts and bolts that you need to be able to play this tune. If you're playing it acoustically, you're probably going to be working on your own arrangement, but you probably want to keep it loose. In my experience, if I'm playing at this kind of thing at a party, there's going to be people like trying to find the words. You might find that, you know, you forget a little bit or whatever. So just don't don't let yourself get stressed or tied into it's got to be a very specific kind of a thing. Uh, if you end up playing the riff around a bunch more times because your mates are singing along and having a great time, then that's fine. You don't need to stick to any sort of set arrangement. Uh, you know, most people are going to be flicking through the, the lyrics on their phones, trying to figure it out and trying to remember it. And it's just it should just be a fun thing a fun sing-along kind of idea so don't feel yourself full of loads of pressure on that front however if you want to have a go at doing this uh introducing the the melody part for the song as well that'll probably take a little bit more advanced practice there uh so what i'm going to do is show you through how i'm approaching it but it is just like i was mucking around playing the chords and i'm like oh i can kind of play the, the the keyboard riff there as well so i thought i'd give you a little bit of a look at that as well uh yeah, but it's less set. Like, feel free to experiment and see what way to do it. Uh, if you've got a two guitar thing going on, you might find that one guitar player plays the chords and the other one plays the melody. That would also sound pretty cool. But uh, let's check that out now. So the first chord is an E minor. So you want to strum that. So the melody there, B, A, B, E. And I'm talking like the capo is not there. I've, I've put the capo on because that's the original recorded key, but uh, you can play this without a capo as well. You don't need one. That's the melody, so strum. Okay, so E minor, I'm using the open B, little finger down, second fret, third string, back to the open, and I'm playing this note on the fourth string. I'll probably go one, two. So one, two, and a three, four, C. So then I'm doing C, C. There's the melody. Okay. Then A minor. So this is now strumming A. One, O, oh, one on the second string, second fret on the fourth string. D. Now here, I. It is, I think just a regular D works, but then I'm missing a sound on the bottom end there. So I tend to play D with an F sharp. Two, O, oh, two, O oh, on the third string, fourth fret on the fourth string, second fret, back to our E minor. sharp bass I'm just splitting those fingers trying to target that note but again if you hit some of the other strings don't get yourself in a pickle over it doesn't really matter whatever the next part it's probably the hardest part so I'm going from G but I'm trying to mute the thing a string and drag the pick down so the last note is that B the second string and now this is a little bit awkward. It's the B, A, G, F sharp. I'm, again, I'm saying the notes as if the capo's not there. But... And I'm targeting that, but it's with the C. That's the melody part. G. And 
there's our B sus to B. Real slow, right through that whole section now. So E minor. Bass, the tricky bit, G, C, B7, sus, B7. Again, I'd encourage you not to be too fussy about this kind of thing. If you, if I was performing a concert and I was playing that as an arrangement, then yeah, I'd, I'd want to spend a lot of time on trying to get it exactly right and thinking about the picking and the fingering. But in a jam situation where I'm playing it for mates at a party, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if I get some wrong notes in there, if I don't quite play it right. I think it's always a good idea to try and keep yourself in time because people, even if they're not musicians, they feel time and they much more than they feel if a note is wrong so trying to make sure that you keep your rhythm solid even if the melody goes wrong is important you definitely don't want to have like a you know you're going along you know it just feels like all oh, lumpy you'd be better off having it weird If it starts to go wrong, try and keep that rhythm going anyway. I think that's an important part of the, the deal if you're ever performing a tune like this with, with friends. That's, the rhythm should be the, the guiding light, the thing that you're most uh, paying attention to, especially if people are trying to sing along. You don't want to stop the rhythm there because people won't be able to sing along. It'll all get uncomfortable and everyone will stop. So assuming that you're watching this just before New Year's Eve, I really hope that the next year is filled with love and laughter for you and have a great one. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care. Bye.